busting at the seams going boom 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 okay it's all recorded to my own song Gotta stomp to my own drum, stomp to okay. my own song. Well, welcome. Today is Mother's Day, and we are doing a dual podcast for Stacked Keys Podcast and The Daily Stack. And the reason for that would be that I'm mom, and then I have my three kiddos with me in the studio. We're at... Break and wave. We're I mean, all, I'm not we're, technically we're in the studio. Screen. Well, you technically are because you're on the screen. But, uh, Isaac, <laughs> where are we? We are at Peach. We are at the Peach Podcast Syndicate at the Parkway Automotives studio. So this is really cool because I do, um, I'm almost to my 100th episode, and I don't usually record in such a fine facility, so this is kind of cool. And then we have uh, Tori, who is in Arizona and who is joining us via screen. Via technology. Such technology. great technology. And then we have Becca, who is here in studio. And then Isaac, who is running the board and putting it all together. So welcome, all of you guys. And then welcome to the listeners. So today's going to be kind of interesting. I don't have any idea exactly where we're headed. But one of the things I want to start out with would be the song that I use on the podcast, and it's called Stomp, and it's by Donica Knight Holdman. And um, Isaac grew up with Donica in high school, and uh, this song just, I don't know, to me just exemplifies um, women going after their dreams and um, just really grabbing hold to what they've got and going as far and forward as they can. And I think that also encompasses everybody. I mean, it encompasses all of my kids. So we're going to focus a little bit on that. So one thing I want to ask them are what are some of their dreams and how as a mom do you think that I facilitated that or did I? I mean, this can be a, um, I don't know, it, it can go many ways. <laughs> Well, I mean, shoot, I'm in Arizona because of how we were, we were raised. Um, I don't know about Isaac and Becca, but I know that I would not have had the opportunities I've had in the field that I'm in if it were not for you pushing us to, you know, stomp to our own drum and follow our passions and that kind of thing. I mean, we've been, we've traveled across the world because of that so yeah well I'm glad you feel that way I mean it, it's tough I can just tell you as a mom it's tough to let you follow those dreams but if you don't then what am I doing any of it for is kind of my my feeling um, I think that through our education in the way that that was given to us it provided the opportunity for what are your passions and how can I facilitate understanding how to fuel those? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, even if you go back for me, as a 12, 13-year-old, I bought all of the dishes that are in my kitchen today. So. Yeah, man, I had to do some Pampered Chef parties with you. That, that wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> but you She know, was sure you, good at it. You wanted to do it, so I'll go along. And so under that, I learned those skills that have been what in my current field I use on a regular basis. I mean, in the pandemic, I've created 62 food demonstration videos, but without the experience of doing live food demos 15 years ago, I don't know that I would have had the same ability. But that freedom was given to us because of the way our schooling was done. What what gave you that uh, inclination to start doing that with us? I mean, I was the first one, and I was in up to kindergarten, and then I came home and we started doing homeschooling, which kind of gave us that initial exploration. Like, I, I just remember growing up as a kid, like, most of the early memories were doing things that were, I mean, every day was an adventure. 
Whereas, like, I, I remember my friends as a kid growing up, you know, they were kind of in the humdrum rat race. Like, I see kids now, they're, like, headed to school, and they have that same feeling. Like, what did that, did, what, what sparked that for you and Dad? Well, part of it was uh, we even did that in preschool, and, and it was kind of a, I, I just wanted to show you the world, and, and um Tom worked a lot of hours, so I would send, um, I would video, <laughs> I couldn't send it, but I would video something that was happening during the day so that he could be a part of it too. And um, so I guess that started as, as little kids, but um, I don't know any other way to do it. I don't know any other way than to take a passion and, and kind of explore it as far as we can. And some of your passions I, I haven't been good at. I could embrace some of Becca's, whereas Tori, I, you know, the snakes and the critters and all those kinds of things weren't my cup of tea, but I wanted to make sure that that you had it. So it was finding people. Well, um, I was going to say, it wasn't necessarily like you might not have – you know, you you didn't go hunting with me. You didn't take me to the outdoors. But you found people around us to facilitate those passions. Like, I mean, I remember yeah. going hunting with some of Dad's, like, linemen and stuff and office people when I was young. Yeah, um, true. Yeah. And the, you know, well, you just found people. Like, I mean, Marvin Cox, you know, taught me how to break down a deer my first time. I mean... You yeah. found people to facilitate that. Yeah, exactly. And Isaac, I can go back when you were little. Um, I went frog gigging. You did. <laughs> and that was with Chris. Um, oh, my mind just went blank. But um, you were young, and he asked if he could take you frog gigging, and I was like, sure. And he didn't come until late that night, and I'm like, this is a little kid. What are we doing? It was super late at night. Like it was. Like I had no idea what frog gigging was. That that you know that's it. Y'all were blessed by my ignorance. <laughs> you just didn't know what we were about to get into. We <laughs> exactly. I could say yes. Well, and it was like because I didn't know. Well, I mean, I know there are a lot of things that we've done growing up that you had an inkling of like where we were going and like. Not anything bad, but like, you know, outdoors, like hiking and rock climbing and things that we've gone and done that you just are better not knowing the full details of what we're doing. Um, I mean, we can even talk about going down the Coosa with Dad. Right, right. She Jumping off rocks that you probably would have had a heart attack how to knowing. jump off the rocks into the rapids. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, home. people. Yeah. But, you know, that's something I really would like to point out to moms that might be listening. A lot of times you think that you have to know everything and you have to be the provider of everything, and that's just bull. You, you don't. You you need to surround yourself with people you trust. And I think that's that's what I did. I surrounded myself around people that I trusted, and I wouldn't mind them teaching my kids something. I knew who the influences were. That was Chris Turner, by the way. And That's it was right. J.T. Turner. I mean, I, I will go back every time and talk about the Turners, and they really laid a foundation for us. Um, and we had several families that did that um, in Sanford. But I distinctly remember J.T. telling us, don't wish your lives away. Don't wish the stage that you're in away. So if it's a yucky stage... I never called two-year-old the terrible twos. We called them the terrific twos. You just enjoyed whatever part it was and whatever it was you were getting with it. Yeah. And and I'll fast forward. I mean, well, I want to say two things, but um, enjoy what you're in. I mean, I'm here this weekend, <laughs> and I have been to more jiu-jitsu <laughs> I've either Tor watched. Tori tried to warn you. <laughs> yeah, Tori you. told me I what told I was you. coming to. Um, because that's the passion that Becca and Isaac are in here, and Tori's they drinking the no Kool Aid too. But they just have no life. That's all it is. Well, you be here too, and actually, we're doing this at this time because Tori did her jujitsu out in Arizona before we came. <laughs> 
So that's that's it. I'm embracing whatever y'all are in. Uh, that doesn't mean that it dictates my life, but I am thrilled to be sitting here watching what you're doing as a, may I say, fairly well-adjusted adults. Somewhat. <laughs> sure. Somewhat. Somewhat argue different. We'll go with that. You go with that. And then the, the other thing I wanted to say is that, um, you know, Isaac and I work together, and there are things he knows that I don't know how to do and, and some of the new technology and such. And um, so there's just this give and take. So a lot of times. So, but that didn't just start now. You didn't just start yeah. sitting on the sidelines of jiu-jitsu. So what made you do what I mean, we've done? been involved in swimming. We've been involved in basketball, football. I mean, and pretty you, much anything. You've always been there. I mean, I can't count. I mean, even you, into, I can count on maybe one hand how many things you've missed of ours. Well, and even into college, our college friends. So what made you be the parent that had the open door that allowed you became everybody's to be mom yeah i mean there's a reason you're called stack mama well part of it's because that's who i wanted to be and i'll tell you right now i'm having to figure out who i am now because it's it's changing and i think that there's a lot of changes that you go through from the moment that you're i mean i was a career woman and and came home um after isaac was born and part of it was I got laid off so you know a lot of times life gives you these <laughs> reasons that you don't have any choice in but but by being laid off I I got to start the next chapter and and I guess that's part of it is being really willing to start the next chapter I mean that that had to be a moment that was a little bit scary because that was y'all oh, were, yeah. you and dad were still a young couple like I was newborn like or well, I got it. Two or three years. No, no, no. You were little. Newborn. Yeah. I was about to quit anyway. I mean, that was kind of was like <laughs> okay. This sucks. I hate coming. I mean, I spent more time at the, um, the nursery, going to rock you in the middle of the day, or then in my office pumping so I could give them milk so that you. Could, I mean, it was just one of these things that it wasn't what I was made to be. I was made to be part of of my kids lives but I came home and took my job back and worked from home and so made more money that year than I did the year I was actually employed by the company but I I don't know I was really blessed and able to kind of incorporate you guys into what I wanted plus what you needed um, and I guess that's it finding a balance of what you want well, I know a, a, a plus side to that was the fact that, um, I mean, like you talk about dad traveling. I mean, I, I know there's <clears throat> times that I don't remember certain things, but they imparted on me enough that like when we would travel, we wouldn't just travel and, you know, go do the tourist sites and you would dive into a place. I don't know how many papers I've written on Washington, D.C., um, you would you would dive in and find like the cool the things cool to do. stuff we look for not cool just stuff. the well, you not, know the touristy yeah. like yeah. this is all fake yeah. um i mean you talk about know, the sharpest corner in the world right right yeah, and like i know for building. me and becca like when we went to china which you pushed us to do you know sending us on our like you know first time across the world alone that was the second Okay, second for you to go to China. That's true. But still, you pushed us to go, and when we were there, we, we incorporated what you had taught us of diving into a culture that a lot of people don't get. Like, where did you get – like, why was it so important for you for us to learn of, of places and not just go visit them? Well, my parents did that. I mean, my parents were like that. Um, my mom was a teacher, but she was also at home, and – um I mean, I sat around and talked to her a lot. So I can go back to my mother and some of the things that she did and that she did well. And then my dad, he was, he, if we could travel, I mean, we got to travel. He's, I went to Europe as a 16 year old and that, I mean, people weren't really doing that back, back when I was growing up. So they pushed us to travel, um, and then some things they didn't do like I wanted them done, so I've changed and pivoted to how I want it. 
um, that's the privilege you get when you have your kids. You don't have to do it the same way that you were raised. When you're a parent. You can make the rules, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you can say that more than once. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I had drive to do some of that. I had drive from my parents and seeing the opportunities. It wasn't always easy. Um, but, you know, it's not always easy for us. But I, I don't know. We kind of. We take turns, too. Everybody has a different need at a different time. And thank thank God they're at different times or we would have jumped <laughs> off a cliff. But, um, but yeah, just the different needs, and then we all rise up to, to, to meet those needs. Um, so I, I got a question for you. What are some phrases that are mommy phrases that you um, can remember? We're supposed to keep this clean, right? <laughs> she yes, said. Isaac. I was told to keep it clean. Yeah, keep it clean. <laughs> um, Not that there would even be anything you could say that there wasn't would never clean. be anything bad. No, no. <laughs> never. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, <laughs> phrases. I don't really remember phrases. I don't remember phrases. I remember more of like the, you know, like the, I guess the mentality. Well, Not necessarily the, lesson, the phrases. The lessons that are like yeah. the the way that it was presented because right. there was no like you're not like, Well, a spoonful of sugar. Like Yeah, like you don't it have wasn't any the, of those. Like the Shakespeare. But like it was the lesson that went along with stuff. I mean it was or it the, was the if you're gonna have opinion you better be able to back it up five ways or your right. opinion doesn't matter. Because everybody's right. got one. Yeah. Now that one, okay, your, that, okay, there is a say, there is one saying, if I gotta say that I remember <laughs> from our childhood that it's always been with me, is opinions are like behinds. Everybody's got one, but you don't go showing them. Learn that in the seventh grade, people. Yes, math, I did. Math that's, class. That would, yeah, that that's would all I got be out one of that I would say. <laughs> but, but you know what? That's another thing that makes you a mom. It's your own life experiences. And you bring them to the table. I mean, they come with you. And so maybe they weren't appropriate. <laughs> but <laughs> It's okay. I don't remember half my childhood, so you're fine. They're going to balance She was out. picked up in a cornfield in case y'all needed to know. Not true. Not true. Uh, mother, you let me believe that for a very long time. Well, that's another thing that, and here's, I let should your do. Kids, let your kids bully each other. It's okay. Well, I actually should do like, uh, <laughs> these are things that sh you should allow and part of it is allow some of the crap to work itself out. You Thank do you. not, as a mother, have to be completely involved. And I will tell you this. Had I known about jiu-jitsu, <laughs> oh, my word. I don't know who would be left standing today, but. <laughs> We're sorting that out right now, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's being, that's being decided now. Yeah, but I mean, be, but y'all have always been physical with each other. Y'all have always I mean, not evil physical, but um, I I don't know if you watched the rounds this morning, but <laughs> Becca was trying to rip something off. So yeah. I don't know what you consider evil, but that was pretty evil earlier. All's fair in love and war. I don't know. Tori used to tie my sweatpants together and my sleeves together. I did do that. I fully 100% remember doing that. Okay. On regular. There's some <laughs> blessings about my Look, you don't really I, I pay attention all, or notice all of it. I take the credit for Isaac being good at jiu-jitsu because me and Becca got him prepared to do jiu-jitsu. Yeah, fighting two on one my whole life. Exactly. That's true. What, what's one person when there's two spider monkeys trying to attack exactly. you? Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, but, you know, there was also a level of respect that I demanded from y'all to each other. I did oh, not right, allow totally. the name calling or the true on bullying. Um, I did not. Y'all hugged each other in fierce, not loving hugs many, many times to apologize. So is it in, in my imagination or did yeah. you used to make us get inside a shirt? I did. <laughs> yeah, y'all had the y'all had the the friendship shirt. Wasn't I don't think I was thing? ever put in it, but y'all two yeah, were a big lot. Big T-shirt. Y'all had to get in it until you could be kind to each other. Okay, so that wasn't a dream. I remember that, Becca. Oh, so yeah. that's what? page twenty-two of the journal. You need to hand that therapist. <laughs> what What were some of the lessons that might have been given to you from 
us. Like I know that like you hear parents all the time. I'm at the age now that I guess I'm around the age that you and dad were when y'all had me. And like you kind of hear people start talking about how like kids change them and how it kind of like gives them back something. Like what was something that changed for y'all in those? Well... <laughs> there there are a lot of things. Um I mean I learned from y'all that you could you could even open more doors for building relationships than we could by ourselves as a couple. Um many a teenager who felt awkward would kind of come and play with one of y'all and they didn't feel awkward in the youth group because they could hang out with the stack houses and help us with the baby. Cause though, I mean, that's part of what I was getting at is that like y'all, I mean, y'all were like everybody's parents. Y'all still have always mm-hmm. been that for like a lot of different all of people. our friends, like yeah, all of yeah. our friends, youth groups, things that y'all have had, like what, what was that kind of one of the biggest things? That is a big advantage and a big lesson that we got, I think through parenting and, and through, um, you know, having, having kids, um, I learned that messy didn't matter, really didn't. Things were replaceable. Things didn't mean anything as much as the relationship with the kid. Um, that didn't mean that you trashed stuff intentionally, but accidents were accidents. So, I mean, I, I think that tolerance probably came through having children, um, I also learned you got the mother bear instinct too. I mean, I I would rise up and defend as fast as the next person. So, you know, I um, those are some lessons. Um, and then my world truly has exploded by having each of you guys involved in different things, knowing different people. Um, so my world grew by being a part of your worlds. Um, and, and as a mom, I guess I also learned to respect your boundaries. Um, there are boundaries and there are things that I can worry about, but I can't put my worry on you. And that's a tough, that, that's also a good life lesson um, because you can worry about so many things, but you don't control more than 90% of your day um, and the people that come into it. So, so I think that might be a lesson. Yeah. I'm glad I'm a mom, but if I hadn't been a mom, <laughs> I think <laughs> I got to reach out here, but I think I would reach out to other people, you know, and be a part of their families. And, I, and the reason I say that is because I watch y'all do that to other people. Um, none of y'all are parents at this point. And so I see you reach out to your friends and you are involved with their kids or teach their kids something that you know or I think um, that and you, then you hand them back. <laughs> I, th- I think that you and dad exposed a lot of us to like older kids that like had a lot to do with our development and you know some of the interest that we found in the diverse interest that we found I think came from the exposure that you gave us and so like I try to help my friends kind of give their kids the same exposure of uh, like treat your kid like a little adult because that's what they're going to remember this like they'll remember when they were six years old and dad let them you know come sit in the podcast studio and hang out with all the adults or like they're going to remember the stuff. Oh wait, I don't think we can hear Tori anymore. Tori, are you still? Oh no. On? Oh, there we go. No, she I've got you. No, you were just. Did pointing. you mute me? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you were breathing a little heavy. So Sorry. rude. Sorry. I'm not the heavy <laughs> breathing the family. Statue. House. They all breathe heavy. <laughs> this, is, this is true. As I was saying. Yeah. It's okay if you don't remember. It is okay but if they, you don't remember. But they do remember the like impressions it gave. I think that you do remember, you may not remember the ABC of what we did because you were in a cornfield, but you do remember, (laughs) you do remember the, the aliens left me with impressions. (laughs) You do remember the, 
I sat on a couch for two and a half hours talking to an adult about who knows what at Gulf Shores before Dad realized uh, that I was sitting for two and a half hours still in a... I don't even know what I had told him. More family about. secrets than we probably ever wanted out there. <laughs> I can tell you that. I, I do think that's a big thing, though, of, of your right, Isaac, of y'all allowed us... To y'all didn't just like sequ- like y'all didn't say okay go sit at the kids table. We didn't hide you it away. Was, it was sit at this table and have a conversation with these adults. Even when we were young, I remember being. I remember like we were. Anybody else remember the steakhouse that I ordered a burger because burger they didn't serve burgers? And they didn't Washington, serve burgers. DC. And they went out and they they literally went and ground uh, a, a, steak a steak up, up and made for hamburger yeah. for you. That was but I was like, sitting. I wasn't sitting with mom and dad. I was sitting in between. You know. Two board members. Dad board ba- members. Did, didn't I dad? Died. Didn't dad and mom or yeah? Didn't y'all just see like a hamburger go by and be like, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but and but y'all taught like us queen. to y'all taught us to talk to adults, and I, I feel like that has, <laughs> which I'm saying that now we're adults now, but like when we were a kid, like y'all, y- you would you you gave us the ability to communicate effectively. But let with me s- other people. Well, and let me say this. You weren't the little kid that were going, I want a hamburger. You weren't doing that. You were like, well, I see this menu, and what I really would like to have, and I don't know if it's something you can do, but I, I'd like to, is there a way you could make a hamburger? <laughs> and, I mean, we look over, and the, the guy is squatting down, the, the waiter is squatting down, helping you figure it out. So there, I will say, Y'all were not spoiled brats because I couldn't have stood that. I mean, we would have no. had to squelch that. But but you did have a respectful interaction. And if he had told you no way, you would have eaten bread. I mean, you, you would have just done. And I think that's where it's okay. It's okay to let your kid figure out and negotiate something on their own. Um, and I guess that's it. It was learning negotiation skills, and I saw that as life qualities. Now, we may have driven some people mad. I mean, like, not happy with us. I don't think that we oh, well. were ever, I don't know. I, I mean, this is being, sub, like, I guess you can't really be subjective here, but, like, I don't think we were ever those little kids that, like, I have now that that I'll see that you're like, oh, not those kids. I don't know. We might have been. But that don't have to come from other people because you know you won't, y'all were mine, so I don't I don't see that. But um, but I don't think so because we were never told to go away, you know, or stop Good helping marker. because uh, you know y'all come help when your kids grow up. Or and and then I'll tell you too, as y'all did grow up, um, I think I was a pretty good mom of not being obtrusive and not being. I could be on a trip. And you were no different to me than oh, anybody yeah. else. So, and that took a lot of self discipline. And I can remember a time or two with the mother hen wanting to go, you know, pluck somebody's eyes out, but you can't because then they'll be permanently eyeless and it'll be your fault. <laughs> so, I mean, I can remember getting kind of mad at seeing how y'all might be treated in a situation and wanting to go fix it and knowing that I couldn't, knowing that that was Whoa. not my role. I recall several times, um, probably on like youth trips um, or choir tours or something like that, of you would be there, but it was never like, a, oh crap, my mom's going to be here. Like she's going to. It was never that because, like, I mean, you treated all of the kids, all of the teenagers, like you treated everybody the same. It's like um, I said earlier, you were everybody's mom. Yeah, I mean, it was, they even it was knew never. That if they uh, brushed your, their teeth with you, you'd walk away. Yeah, they knew my But it was never a, like, issues. oh, you know, Tori Beck and Isaac's uh, mom's coming. Like, yeah. It was never that ever that I recall. Well, what I would like for parents to know now, you know, moms especially, because I think moms are hard on themselves. I really think that moms need to understand that they do need to be around. Man, they need to be around more today than they ever needed to be around. If you are not involved and not a part of your kid's life, you're screwing up. But your job is to figure out how to be a part and how to, to, and it's not being buddy-buddy because that just didn't it, but to provide and to be around and 
today's world is is mean. And to not be um, a part of it is the biggest mistake a mom can make today. But I think that some of that came from you sat down and watched our TV shows with us, whether mm-hmm. you wanted to or not. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I went to bed last <laughs> night. That one was pretty rough. The, but, mid, the, the midnight well, gospel. Oh. <laughs> I was watching. But, the yeah. Mid- yeah. But you, Isaac's you sat listeners there and will know that. You watched one. that. Or watched with us and let it be your discussion to springboard things rather mm-hmm. than letting us just go. Because until we were teenagers or I guess I probably 14, 15 was the first time I ever had a TV in my bedroom. TVs Shoot, weren't I didn't in, have one until I was in college. But I only had one in my bedroom because the I, never I didn't have one, one until four years ago. <laughs> because, but that was because the Xbox was on the family TV, and so yeah. that I didn't have to watch video games. I was given a yeah. TV, that but you came and watched with me. Yeah, that's true. So like there, there wasn't really a you go off and watch your own thing. But you also didn't ever force us to do things like, um, I'm I guess such the a biggest thing mom. like. Nah, I recall a few boycotts. Uh, I mean, but, like, what I'm saying, like, uh, you never, like, growing up, like, me and Becca, like, we're not girly girls. We're not, you know, that, but Becca likes enjoying, like, the girly movies. I hated them. She's watching them, by the way, now. She'll also watch the gory (laughs) movies. Yeah, I know. You would let me go with Dad and Isaac camping. Instead, like you wouldn't, you never forced us to do. Like I remember, there's there was a time in certain sports that we were like, man, I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. But we had to finish like, the season. But we had to finish it because we started it. The season, not stay with it, but the season. Of right. What we had you never let us quit anything. Like that's you and Dad right. never let us be like, this is hard. I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. Like okay, yeah. cool. You got three months of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know why? I can I can tell you the two reasons for that. One, it cost a lot to start in anything. I I have heard. And to to start in anything, it's like, oh no 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 no. I We're, just spent three hundred dollars. You're gonna yeah, you're gonna you're enjoy playing. this. You're, playing. you're finishing this. Yeah. I don't care if you do pick the daisies, but you're gonna be out there. Um, and then the other thing is, you've made a commitment to a coach, and I think that that is respect. And that is respect that you learn as an adult. You start learning as a child. And well, how you respect that coach, commitment to your teammates. Um, you know, it's important. That is an important life lesson. And if I don't respect your coach, how do you respect your coach? I mean, yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. So, and I, not to say we didn't get ticked off with coaches along the way, but I really don't ever remember getting in one space or – one th- one thing that I've learned from some of the people that I've been around has been that like if you're that invested as a parent and to where you're like getting ticked quote unquote off with a coach you're like man like you're too far into it like it's too you're taken away from the kid like just let the kid enjoy whatever the kid wants yeah and I think you and dad did a lot like dad would just be like good job like he wasn't trying to like coach me now if I asked him hey do you have any pointers and he w- had experience. He would give me his two cents. Well, true. But I'll tell you, you know how you control yourself when you're a very dominating person? You find things that the coach needs you to do, and you do them. And that gives you a job and a role as a parent and as a mom. I mean, that's why I was in the concession stand, or I was, you know, doing T-shirts or doing whatever, because those are a lot of roles that the coach needs done. And it makes me feel like I'm making their job easier. I mean, even as y'all also, got to be adults, I mean, I can remember looking at Andy and going, do you need some food? Do y'all need a place to stay? <laughs> do y'all need – because he was doing so much for, for you. Yeah. So what but were you saying, you Tor? also, like, even if we had tough situations, like with coaches or other teammates, or you let us work those battles out ourselves. Yeah. Like – you didn't just jump in and, you know, say, this is my kid. Like, this is how it's going to be. Like, you let us handle the situations. Well, our car could be the gripe car. If you needed to get in the car and you needed to mm-hmm. just 
<laughs> say whatever you wanted to and really work through your feelings, that was the place to do it. Yeah. And then, okay, now go deal with it. And yeah. and then y'all have gone through some times where you've complained and complained and complained, and I know dad's looked at you and said, put up or shut up. I mean, you know, yeah. you either deal with it, make a change, um, and I guess that's part of it too. But, I, you know, I, I want y'all to know I, we've made mistakes. We made We've made huge mistakes. Um, dad and I balance each other pretty well. And so that, that might be where you get a better mom because you've got a pretty solid dad. Well, and I think it's also important to know that you can have, you know, a massive screw up. You can drop the ball and it doesn't wreck your kid's life. That's true. I mean, it's going to suck for the situation that it's in. And you know, but for the most part, it you know it, it works itself out. And I I don't know that they can actually be qualified as mess ups. I mean, we've had some things not go as sideways and bad as they could have gone because there were some stopping. But my whole philosophy has been put my claws in y'all and not let go. Um, you make well, a bad decision. You say that, but it's not it's not like a bad like. When you say, like, put your claws on us and you have let's go, like, it's not a overbearing, I'm going to be in every single aspect of your life because I choose that. It's well, a, and I, I guess I'm not being fair. I'm looking at two different things. I'm looking at a worst case scenario of, you know, something happening that, you know, wasn't within the framework of what our family was and then the everyday normal stuff. I, I'm talking about going real sideways i'm gonna put my claws in and oh, yeah. and then yeah. and but i mean i guess if i can't really say that either because i haven't had one go so far off that there was no return um but but i will say to moms that are out there yes there are single moms and you can do it but you do it by looking for other people to invest in um i can't tell you how many people um dad had influence on that came through scouts that didn't have a dad so those moms could look for other sources for help and for for encouragement um so i mean it's not easy every day's not easy and some days are pretty lonely as a mom yeah like as far as with when I mean, I, I have the friends that have the young kids now. I mean, you have mom spends all day with the kids, and then like once the adult interaction, when they get home and dad's tired, you know, like I I I've, I can imagine that those are some of the difficult things. And I mean, y'all were homeschooling, so it was like you didn't really get a break from us for <laughs> no. long stints. No, and I, I have a know. time I where I remember sending us to our rooms and saying, "Go play." Just go close the door and play. <laughs> well, and we did have sit on your bed time. I don't care what you do, but you're on your bed. Um, or, you know, you're working on this project by yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, th that was it. But but even in that, you had created schedules that you had to consistently break. Yeah. So I yeah, Becca. <laughs> <We're all laughs> this was the the child that scheduled her whole life, and then if everyone else's schedule didn't match up, it was it was game no, over. It was not my schedule. It was mom's schedule, and she gave <laughs> oh, no. me this schedule. No, no, it was your schedule. <laughs> no, it was mom's schedule that she created and gave us the color coded schedule. <laughs> and it this was is the child that mom had to purposely destroy her schedule occasionally just to be like, does it have to go this way? You're not in charge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was the main part. What was that show, Charles in Charge? It was that little sitcom where the babysitter was. I can't remember what his name was, but I'm sure no, that was about. way after before all of us. Yeah, my oh, okay. Was well, anyway, he was in charge. <laughs> um, so something I, I thought about with that is that um, do y'all remember our chore chart? Yep. Yeah. One oh, you talking about the little daddy and mommy bucks? 
Yeah. You say yeah. you don't remember your childhood. Yeah, she does. <laughs> when you paid her, she remembered. <laughs> So do no, you, I remember that it had a chore list of what all of our chores were, and if you did the chore, you got a certain amount of daddy or mommy bucks, and then you could do like spend them, where like watch a movie with mom or like you got go the control. Out for a yeah, day you would get the control or like or the food or play the, the video yeah. games or something. Like you had like a thing that you could buy with the daddy or mommy bucks. I remember yeah. that. So, do you remember the actual chores? Do you remember how the picture on the front and then the directions of how to do it were on the back? Yeah. I remember the Um. picture. I don't remember the directions. Okay, this is the problem. She saw the picture. He doesn't remember any of it. I've been punching the head a lot. (laughs) Becca saw the picture and the directions, so she knew how to do it all. Well, I remember, like, fold laundry. (laughs) Go, there's a chart. Play in the kitchen. (laughs) See, my chores are why, why I do laundry a certain way. I bet you goes back to the chore chart. I bet it does. I'll have to go find it and find See out. It's probably why I like pictures and reports. I never read the back of it either. <laughs> <laughs> See, I am your child. Yeah. <laughs> you can't deny it. So, so that's, uh, that's another thing. I think so frequently moms get overwhelmed with everything that they have to do. Heck, you've got kids. <laughs> they should be doing something. I was under the impression that I was that was the reason you had me for the first like fifteen years of my life. Fifteen? So, what do you what about now? Nineteen. I'm 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 in the family business. What what would I expect? Exactly. But I mean it is so important to use those things, but what you have to do to teach lessons, but what you have to do is realize your standard may not be reached when they're seven. But by the time they're, you know, older, then you you've taught a life skill. Uh, well, I mean, I distinctly remember having to help. I mean, I was doing my own laundry by the time I was older. Like I like because we had all our own athletics. So like all of us had to make sure that we had our own stuff. And mom wasn't gonna check your bag yeah. for you. I got to practice yeah. one time without something. It was like whoop, <laughs> check I your do, bag. I do remember that of when we were swimming. And when we got to basketball, you never packed our bags for us. No, nope, it was coach always our that. jobs of you better make sure you have your swimsuit. You better make sure you have your goggles and cap because I'm not packing it for you. Because the people yeah. we swam with that their parents packed it, they mm-hmm. were well. My mom they didn't were pack screaming my at their parents. Towel today. My parents forgot yeah. my yeah. goggles. But if if we not forgot something, job. it was on us. Yep. And the Isaac, you did not get to start a swim team in Sanford because of that. Because the coach said, can he get his stuff together? Can he maintain his bag? And we decided, nope. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> little did they know. He's seen yeah. his bag today. Yeah, yeah. But, but. It's, it's maintained and clean. There you Except go. Except he's currently lost Skeletor because he can't keep up with no, all no, the No, 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 no. That was somebody who picked up. So if anybody has an extra, an, uh, not extra large, a large that is an extra in their bag, they're going to bring it back to me. <laughs> but there was a reason for that. And it was because if you aren't teaching those responsibilities at that age, you look pretty stupid telling a 16-year-old that. But when telling I was a, about seven, eight years old, I started doing my own laundry. Yeah, that's true. I started. Ain't telling, nobody touches back of laundry. <laughs> yeah, I won't do it now. That's uh, a thing now. Yeah. I started to oh tell my God, her how I to do I started, my laundry. I started doing the dishes this weekend, and she's like, yeah, yeah. "You are stacking the dishes wrong." And I'm like, "They're well, still stacked wrong currently, right this moment." <laughs> are they? <laughs> you mean the ones I did on Mother's Day lunch? <laughs> We've had a wonderful Mother's Day lunch. We have. But I specifically thought, put the plates like this. She'll <laughs> like that. No. No, no, no. You have to do it how she does it. And well, it's different every time. So. It's different just every let time. Her, just let her do it. Okay. My well, approach. there you go. <laughs> I'm absolved no, of my I, responsibility. I do. I do. I told I do, you I do. Uh, I know I you did. Asleep. I know. I, I think that comes from, though, of you when we were younger and as we got older, like, I mean, we, it was our, it, it wasn't just you doing the laundry, doing the dishes, cleaning the house. Like, we still had to pitch in. I mean, I don't remember no, ever. my biggest culture shock was the first time y'all were, like, all gone. I'm like, 
I've got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? So if we look at my laundry, then y'all realize that means for 20 plus years, I've been doing my own laundry. So this oh, would hush. be why it's specific. And me and Isaac are like, eh, it's clean on the couch. As long <laughs> as it's clean. Oh, wait. You obviously haven't visited your sister in a while. There is definitely a couch filtration system that has happened in her. <laughs> Mount oh, Saint Laundry. The last time I was at her house, it was piled up on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. Mount, Mount Saint Laundry. It, other words, y'all taught us. I mean, I, you have pushed us to have fun. I mean, yeah, work I don't hard, ever play hard. Call yeah, it's you work hard, you play hard. I mean, it, I think it's extremely evident at the house y'all live at now of, you know, we have, we, we will bust butt of, you know, cleaning and, and getting things organized. And I know Isaac's planting the garden right now, like doing all this stuff. A lot but of it's like, all right, let's go play. <laughs> that was because you let's took dad shopping with you. That was not my fault. <laughs> let's go play on the water. Let's go play on the boat. Like, yeah. It's not always just work, work, work. No, it's not. It's finding passions. It's finding out what do you want to do, okay? We wanted water. We wanted land, and, and we've been blessed to get that. But there's still work that has to go into it so that you can enjoy it. And I think life's just a balance, a constant balance. Well, but even our off time looks different than most people. Like, well, I've had people... In all of us, our off time looks different. It's not lollygagging. It's we went to Colorado and snowboarded and dragged Tori around to Train gyms. twice a day, every day. <laughs> Bless your every heart, Tori. Day. <laughs> <laughs> she looks. I like cool. working out. Don't get me wrong. I love working out. I'm enjoying jujitsu, but I don't live at the gym like the gym rat sitting next to you. <laughs> guilty as charged. I have. They fun. are guilty. But yeah. I'm telling you, it's a little bit contagious. I told him, I said, Dad and I might start this, but we're not going to tell anybody for they about got a, a year. Mat. They're going to be, they're going to be like, <laughs> yeah, they're going to yeah. be like, they're going to be Ninja Turtle in it up there, <laughs> and all of a sudden, Mom and Dad are going to come out Barambolo and everybody. Yep, we're not going to tell anybody. And then they've been watching the PGF. One, and we have one day, and now we're starting to sit beside them and find out what moves are and what they really mean. So, yeah, I sat there and watched it yesterday, Stephen and his tournament, and they're talking about what everybody's doing, and I could see it. I could see what they were doing. <laughs> Beware. But y'all have always done that. I mean, you've always got into whatever sport we're in. I mean, I, we're, in, we're in swimming, y'all are on the deck, you know, cheering us on. I mean, y'all weren't swimmers. Mostly we were you cheering you on, players. but we did look. Right, but sh- at yo, yo, somebody uh, and cheer and then find out that that wasn't our kid. <laughs> but then, like, you know, when we left swimming, like, Isaac went football and we went basketball. You know, dad's football, like, that's what, like, he, he played in that's college. He like, did. he loved it. And so he, he could help Isaac in situations. And then when we got into basketball, like, that wasn't really y'all sport, but y'all were on the sidelines like cheering us on like dad started coaching like well, he went and became a coach he went and got educated and became a coach and he was actually a right. pretty good coach he he went in and would dig in to basketball stuff and and then like so what gives y'all that drive to want to learn what we're yeah. doing yeah like y'all always I don't learn look what we're stupid doing on the sideline <laughs> I don't want to yell the wrong thing. Going. Oh, Matter of fact, when we first got into swimming, um, Lynn Henderson was my swim buddy, and they're talking about heats, and I didn't know what the heck a heat was. And so, you know, she taught me. And then when we got into basketball, you know, I watched, and you learn by watching, you learn by doing, and you kind of connect with some, some parents that know a little bit more than you do. Okay, but if you go to jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu has been around for more than a decade now. But uh, you're like hundreds just, of years. But yeah. Well, no. In, in our for you, oh, Isaac. Oh, in our life. Okay. Follow the chain. <laughs> and, but you're just now really starting to learn some of it. Why? Um, well, he hadn't always been jujitsu. He's yes, been. I mean, I've, I've trained. I've, I've trained jujitsu from the start, but like it was. It didn't well, look. It didn't look. It didn't it look wasn't, the same. No, it he didn't wasn't look a gym the same. rat. He wasn't a gym rat. 
It was, well, okay, the, this is actually to the point that we were talking about earlier. There are boundaries. I mean, he was, how old were you? Uh, my mid-20s. Like, I, that's kind of the time period that yeah. you spend away from your parents. Yeah, yeah and mommy yeah. doesn't show up at the gym with you. That's weird. Yeah. And so, you know, it. there was just kind of a... a now period. this is like you showing up to my job. And yeah. so it's not weird. And yeah. so, and, and one night we went, and I was terrified to go because we were going to Montgomery, and I'm like, oh, God, it's going to be like this hole in the wall, like... We're probably okay. not gonna be safe. Some when you were you were training one night. You were training one. Okay. Night. He started in Montgomery. I started in Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery. And oh, so we went to watch. Taylor. Yeah. We went to watch and, and I realized that it was something different than I realized. Then one of the tournaments that I remember that were early on was at Samford University. Okay. I well, that's a <laughs> that's one of the worst run ones. But yeah. <laughs> But hey, it, it's, it was yeah, where no, we went. No, yeah. It's like okay, this is kind of it. It kind of gave well, we you a little been more going there, so you kind of yeah. had an idea of yeah. where because we cause we played basketball. Y'all played there ball all the there, yeah. And yeah. so you kind of had an idea yeah. of oh, it's not like a well, you played ball there street corner uh, like fence that you just throw people in and fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There but, was some of that, but part of it, you know, you ask why now, life's changing. Life's changing. There's. There, that's how I get to see and be a part. And I think I told you earlier this weekend, just being here and watching y'all do what you do is gratifying. I mean, it, it's gratifying to know that um, that y'all are doing something that you enjoy and that's good for you. I mean, it's physically, overall, mostly sort of good for you. It's the gentle art. Yeah, I don't know. I got all applauded today, and it hurt really bad. Did <laughs> tap earlier. I got crucified. Did you tap? Just to hurt my feelings. Oh, absolutely. I tapped. It just, he did it so quick. <laughs> hurt my pride. <laughs> hurt my shoulder. But, okay, so taking another swing of, um, I know there's activities we have done that are not bad activities, just more on the dangerous side activities. And I made this comment to you not that long ago of when we were coming up, you didn't really worry about it as much as you do now. And I gave Isaac an answer the other day in the garden. Wait, I, I didn't you know. What I know. Mean, yeah. I didn't know. I really honestly didn't. I don't know how stupid this makes me sound. You, you didn't know how dangerous the stuff was that we were doing. I didn't know you could do more than break your arm. And then I had a friend who lost a child. Yeah. And I was like, when did that, when did that turning point come? When she died. When that child died, and she didn't do anything but fall from bleachers, mm, and was it two thousand two, I I don't remember. Yeah, but but that that did get me, um, because it's like oh god. Well then, and then I became you, real neurotic towards other people who were not. But that watching still would children. have been before we were teenagers, right? So how did you deal with us going on repelling off you know, rocks? Repelling. Like, I've I mean, also watched off the cliff. I've also watched mom. Yeah. Um, I've also watched moms try to stop their kids from doing things, and that made it more dangerous um, because their kids weren't in situations where they were learning from the appropriate people. And so, and I'll just blindfully still think that I'm giving y'all that opportunity, but, but I don't know. Sometimes as a mom, I feel like you can squelch your kids to the point where they're going to squeeze out and find it somewhere else. And if they find it somewhere else, it might not be the best place. So I'd rather um, know and then look for what you need. Um, if you need my help finding that, then let's find it. If you can find it on your own, then so you know, don't how hide do you, it. how do you, like, I know, like, you help us do whatever we're going to do, but, like, how do you... I guess find the peace in knowing that, you know, there's things we do that are very dangerous. Um, I know all of us have. Because you're going to die doing something you're happy doing. I mean, that, that's just kind yeah. of it. I mean, you're going to, I would, if you're doing something, then you're not being stupid and you've been trained and you, you know, you're, you're going to, 
die with your passions being fulfilled. There's no better yeah. way to live. Well, I know it came up when uh, I went to Alaska and we, uh, I think we went and did my living will or something. Yeah. It came up. Um, yeah. So you're prepared. So I mean, yeah, some bad stuff can happen. Well, I mean, if you look at Alaska, Alaska, she was around bears within feet of feet of them. Okay, my T-shirt says "Ignorance is bliss." <laughs> um, we didn't necessarily tell mom all. Well, I, like, well, I knew about Alaska now. Well, I mean, I knew mama, what was there. Mama did not know the extent of <laughs> what we did in Alaska until y'all came to visit right. me. Right. And I took y'all to Katmai. Right. And until I saw uh, kind of what it was really there. And yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. flying in the float planes. And, but you like know, I said, like I said, Tori, you go down in a plane like that. I, I'm going to look at people and go, yeah, I miss her. But boy, she was having fun. I mean, <laughs> that, maybe that's that a good way. Really I mean, but I mean, was that something that developed? Because I mean, like we went through kind of as a young family, like with me, like we went through like kind of a, a, a realization that you like, oh, like one of my kids could die or like one of my well, kids. Well, that like, was another kind of like yeah. what kind of pushed well, I mean, over. if you look at the sequence of it, we thought you really didn't have room for craft to go on. And then when we got to the point that we could enjoy stuff, it was enjoy it and enjoy it to the fullest. Yeah. Yeah, and I um, mean, yeah, Isaac, your your situation did make us um, think, made me think as a mom, and part of it was, well, first of all, in your heart surgery, um, that was our field trip, you know, ultimate oh, field yeah. trip. It was like my miniature, my own yeah. personal miniature trip to med school. We we <laughs> actually did take the unit study on anatomy, and go for learning it because it was like okay. <laughs> Here's the chance to, first of all, we need to know it. We don't need to be ignorant. Um, and then here's the chance. And and he woke up. I used to joke and say he woke up just like every other school day. That was, studied I, it all, knew it all, and forgot it when he woke up. That's <laughs> so, Yeah. y'all. They, they took me to the cath, and I had my cath done. And that was one of the ones where, like, they let me stay awake. And I'm really still not even sure why they let a 13-year-old kid stay awake for that. But like I, I like I watched them do the whole thing. Like was just like, oh, this is awesome, and I have a memory like fleeting of what it was. But then apparently I came back and told everybody in the room everything that had happened. Yeah, word for word. It was like they went in this ventricle and this thing and this and that, and then three o'clock drugs wore off. <laughs> Don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> that was funny. It was like typical school day. But how did you, I mean, so did that influence how we were allowed to take High Adventure? Yeah, it Because High Adventure is through and through. I yeah. Mean, we went out to Colorado and Well, we Adventure. did it before, we did it before that. I mean, Isaac and Tom were supposed to go on. Um, the border waters trip. The border yeah, waters trip. And yeah, and they were supposed to do that right when Isaac got sick. And um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we had that inclination before. That's a lot more your dad. I mean, your dad did some stupid things growing up because <laughs> because his dad would do it. His dad would would. That take, is true. We've done more stupid things like high adventure wise with dad. Than we yeah, with but you. his dad would would make what they had work, and they had a blast, and they were all alive. So, you know, I mean, I guess I look at those. It's a good odds. marker. Yeah, but but you know. Um, I do know that when Isaac went into surgery, he looked at us and he said, I have two things. Um, I'm not afraid because, you know, it's got to be done and I'm not going to sit on the couch and wait to to have another heart attack. I, I We've got to do this because that was an option to do nothing. Uh, they, 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 they gave me the option to be sedentary or to do the surgery. Yeah. So, and he goes, that's not an option for me. I'd rather, I'd rather be dead. And then the other is, um, Isaac said, if, if I close my eyes and I don't open them here and I open them and I'm looking at the face of Jesus, then I'm done. And so that was a, a strong faith. And, and I mean, I, we can talk about everything. Um, but I, my core of parenting comes back to my faith. Um, I feel like I was blessed with a family. I was blessed with children. 
We've had a lot of storms hit us. Um, but, you know, I feel like that that we weather it because we've got faith. And um, so if you but if you go to the medical issues, do you think that that's why we handle medical issues in the way that we do? They can either be fixed in our modern medicine or in the ways they need to. Yeah. Or you can sit on the couch and just be in a corner. Yeah. And same thing with you. Your your doctor said, well, you got Crohn's. You can sit in the corner and do nothing. Or you can figure out how to live and get out there. And you figure out how to live. I, I can't think of any other way to do it um, and, and be happy. So. Well, I also think that I know, like, on the outside, some people might see our lives as living extravagantly and going to doing all these things and, you know. But I feel like y'all imparted on us that, you know, life is short and you really don't know what could happen. You know, anything could happen. I think a lot of that's so priority. while you're here. I think like, a lot of that's priority. Go do the stuff you love. Go, mm. you know jump off a cliff go scuba diving i mean we all we all scuba dive and you know as you know fun and as scuba diving is like you can lose your life scuba diving yeah i don't watch those movies <laughs> <laughs> well no, and i think a lot the of it's too i think a lot of it's too is priority story is that like a lot of people would look at things and like mom and dad didn't have they didn't drive the latest, greatest, nicest car. They didn't have the, like, they had, like, what they needed. And then they put what they wanted into us. They didn't put, like, I see a lot of people that will put, they'll put a lot of emphasis on what they're spending on their uh, lifestyle or on their, like, keeping their life as a, as a whole but not spending it on, you know, the experiences. Like that's what we grew up with was mom and dad giving us experiences or giving us access to experiences. Well, and we weren't oh, handed all experiences. There are things that no. we had to do something for to have the opportunity. We may mm -hmm. have had to give up X, Y, and Z to be able to go do but we were mm -hmm. taught how to spend money not necessarily on things so much as experiences. And like we do that as siblings, but even in the friend in my closest friends, experiences is how we spend time together. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because for me that's something I'm starting to miss with my own mom is the experiences. Um, you know, I I sat on the couch, well, not on the couch, I was usually sitting on the counter, where mom was either sewing or cooking or, you know, I was able to interact and and just kind of be with her through different experiences. Um, so, yeah, you only have a limited amount of time that you get to do that. And, um, and my mom's living and, and, and healthy, but... Um, but her ability to go is, is not as much. So she lives vicariously through y'all's experiences. I mean, I'll call her and talk during the day and she wants to hear, you know, what somebody's doing or, you know, she laughs at some of the things that Tori's involved in. And well, of course, Tori's able to do this or that, you know, and just wait until you tell her what you watched today for two hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I called her yesterday because I knew what we were going to be doing today. And so, it's, um, experiences are kind of the fabric of life for me. And I hope they are for you. I, I mean, when you, when you hear the word, or when somebody talks about their mom, do I pop in y'all's minds of I what mean, mom, mom is? Do what? <laughs> I mean, you're our mom, so. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yes. Am I like y'all's friends' moms? I mean, is it kind of pretty much Honestly, the same? There are very few, and I have some now, but there are very few of my friends that y'all were like their parents, especially growing up. Um, now I have friends that you're a lot like their parents. Um, but I remember growing up of y'all were very 
different kinds of parents. It wasn't everyone was always like, how do you stand like your parents being around all the time? And I'm like, I don't care. Like, they're cool. Yeah, I think that was something that came up a lot sometimes as a kid was like you, mm-hmm. that your parents were around a lot. And it's like, yeah, well, I mean, uh, there is there was a certain point where like it kind of got to where you were like, well, they are around a lot. And then it was like, it's not that bad. Cause like they said, like it didn't change. It's not that bad. Well, it didn't, it, well, it didn't change. You, you didn't treat me any differently than you did then. Like you yeah. were what you were. You were my mom. You treated me the same way. Our yeah. friends are <clears throat> ranked higher than we are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure <laughs> my friends, my, my friends do better friends off. Are still higher than me. One of yours. Yep. Sent me a happy Mother's Day this morning. Uh, before any Which of one? us. Which one's kissing butt? You can butt? probably yeah. guess. Who do you think? Who wants to fish this summer? Who is it? No. No? He's not living close by right now. Brandon. So. Yep, Brandon. Oh. That's just because he wants a place All right, to vacation. Arnold, I see you. <laughs> trying to move on on my mom. Hey. You're already ready to tire. Stop trying. <laughs> But well. I, but some of it is is I in some way you formed us of we really don't change who we are whether you're Versus there at home or not. or not yeah but do you yeah. know what I don't change and who I am around you either and I think that's part of it um, and that yeah. still doesn't mean I mean there are some parents that Our zero friends. in totally on their kid and their it becomes all about their kid but. I, we don't change. I mean, I didn't have to put, I didn't have to put down my cup because y'all couldn't drink out of my cup when you were children. I mean, what I was drinking, you could have. Um, and I mean, because it was not alcoholic, not because I was a very <laughs> promiscuous parent, but, but yeah, <laughs> but, um, I guess that's part of it is being a genuine person, be a person and then a parent. Well, and you also treated us with the respect of, like, this is something that I've seen a couple of my friends that do, and I see it reflect in their kids as their kids get older. Is it like they treat their kids like an adult? They talk to them like an adult. They don't They don't baby them. They don't, like, sugarcoat things for them. They're just like, this is how it is. This is the life that you're in. This is the world that you're in. And they treat them like an adult. And that's that's something that I think that you and Deb did frequently. We well, absolutely yeah. not. Let me say something real quick, Tori. We absolutely on any issues, and we dealt with big ones. We were completely honest. Here's what's going on. Here's what we've got to do. You never and, lied to us about like somebody who died or anything like right. that. Right? Like, no, somebody or even died, what your problem was. was well, I would say even with our problems, it was never sugar coated. Like we had a lot of medical issues up until late into high school and early college. Um, no. And That's y'all never, well, I mean, we still have certain issues, we medical issues turns. now, but, but like <laughs> big things that happened, it wasn't ever like, oh, honey, it's going to be fine. Like there was a little bit of that, but there was also of you either pull your buckles up and tie your shoes and you do what you need to do yeah, or you're just not going to live. I mean. When I had knee surgery, I remember a conversation with you of, if you want to play basketball, this is what you have to do. And it's going to be a hard road. It's not going to be easy, but you got to do it. Yeah, but we'll be there and, with you. I mean, that's... Right, and you, you were know, there, we'll, went through we'll the pain do. and through it all and... Carried your books. <laughs> only for a week. It was um, a week. It was a week out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like y'all, y- like she you and Dad, both out. of <laughs> she does. like y'all did not allow us to just sit there and wallow in self misery. Y'all, not for long. Yeah. All right, let me spin it just a little bit because we're getting real sweet and everything, and I'm not perfect. All right, what's the big gripe, Mommy? Gripe. Y'all start. I, I, I switched Y'all the camera start. over and looked at Becca. <laughs> but, um, I mean, there's got to be a, gee, I wish you were. None? Awesome. I think, Give well, us a second. I oh. think, we got to formulate. I think if, 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 if it was, I mean, there were some times that maybe, and being the oldest, 
there were some times that I feel like that maybe there were some learning things that were going on. And like as uh, being yeah. the old, like as as getting older now, I'm like, oh shit! Like if I had to, if I had to figure out what like a six year old needed right now, like I would be in a little bit of like, ah, sure, try it, man. Like I so said, just makes perfect. I'm sure there was oh, a, a, a t. t- <laughs> I'm sure there was there was a, a, an element of that. So I mean, like any of my quote gri- gripes would have been things that I think that were honestly experimentation of like, oh, maybe we should let him go in this route, and then and because y'all gave me that, y'all gave me that space to grow a lot eventually. Well, maybe it is more of the sometimes you want to just give us the answers and not allow us to figure it out. Yeah, personality trait. Yeah. Well, and so sometimes that, I think, is where controversy comes in. Not letting us just go fall. All right, cool. Let Go try it. Go Flat fall. on your face. Okay, now let's do it the way we were going to talk about it. Yeah, All right, and let me tell you, let me defend myself on this one, and let me tell you why. She asked the question, if in case anyone needs to well, hey, it. Before you defend yourself, okay. I, will, I will say with Isaac on that, like of there were points in my life that I had certain friends – that you kind of let me figure it out on my own, but there was also that you didn't want me to because you knew it was going to end badly. You knew it was going to hurt. Right. You knew it was going to hurt. You knew it was going to crash and burn and you didn't want to make us go through it. I think if anybody could say that you had a pitfall, that it would be the fact that you don't want your kids to hurt and like you want yeah. to get in and you want to like make that and sometimes like it. we needed to learn those the hard way. Because you yeah. have three stubborn kids. Yeah. I do. <laughs> but I, but I'll tell yep. you. I mean, I feel that way about your friends too. If I can stop them from making a mistake, from having that happen, yeah, then I want to to tell them, hey, don't do that, don't, uh, uh-uh, don't, um, and and I, what I was going to say in defense is, I also know that in my childhood you could screw up, you could really make mistakes, and there was coming back. I mean, you could you could you could flunk something, you could come back, you could make a really bad choice, you could come back. And it seems like society got harder and harder and harsher to where if you messed up sometimes, that could be it. Hmm. And there wasn't the grace. I mean, I graduated college and I'm just fine, and I didn't have to worry about the 4.0. Thank you, Jesus. But, (laughs) But I mean... Those kinds of pressures became insane for society. And I think that sometimes as a mom, you just, it is so hard to let the failure happen because the failure can kill you. The failure can um, stop your, your chances for success somewhere. But sometimes those failures have to happen mm-hmm. in order for the ability to deal with what's to grow. Next. Yeah, that's true. So how do you let go and let that happen? Obviously, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I think I think you did. No, I, I think, think ultimately you did. You did. Ultimately, yeah. you would let go. And I think that that's the balance between you and dad. I think you and dad had that balance of like mm-hmm. how far to let them walk on the tightrope. I mean, how far do you let them fall? Like how, how do you let it like happen? Yeah, like, we still sit there sometimes when we're talking on the phone and he's saying something and I'm writing stop don't say that don't you know so i mean we still and again it goes right back to and he does the same thing to me don't say that walk away so i I, okay i I will say if you if you're asking the question i think there are times oh here she goes no (laughs) give her enough time she's got it you said it i got no the the little kid went to go get her (laughs) so <laughs> no there are times and you said it there are times you don't want to let go and it's i think that's the parents i mean i haven't I been a parent a myself parent yeah, yeah i think that but everyone that i know that is a parent like I, they i see it in everybody of like oh they don't want to let the kid you don't want them to suffer so how have you done that because 
that will that follow an Isaac's comment. That sounds bad. Dad does it. <laughs> <laughs> Dad lets you go and fall on your face and then come back. He no, gets I, a kick. He I gets a remember. kick out of it when no, you come wait, back. Oh, wait, he gets no. a kick. He gets a kick out of it when you come back and you go. You were right. You were right. <laughs> well, I do remember coming back to you on the occasion that I'm thinking of. That I know you are no like. I remember coming back to you and being like, you know what? You were right. You're 100% and I did right. did not say but, I told you so. Yes, I did. But it was something that I needed to go through. Well, there's sometimes that you can't get in the middle because you get in the middle and it gets worse. And I know that. And so there's sometimes where I can say, you know, you're making a bad friend choice here and you're making a bad decision going down this way. But I don't I don't I don't really know the answer to that. But I will tell you this, um, I don't think that I, I had a much more clear pathway in my growing up. I knew, I knew what rules I didn't know that were going to always be changing. And then I knew the rules that were static. And so I just broke the rules that were static so that the ones that were going to hit me no matter what. I wonder who got that. Word. Yeah, I think so. But but Dad didn't have that same upbringing. Dad had more of a um, he just he was allowed to to strike out and learn and and um, make his decisions and make mistakes and it was okay. For me, I think if I had made some mistakes, that would have been the end of my opportunity and so i didn't go there is it the end perceived opportunity or is it the end of the opportunity because i don't think that uh, necessarily would have been the end of the opportunity <laughs> but i mean like that that's the same as end is of the perceived because that is the world that you perceived that you were in and so true well in that aspect isaac of when we were kids mom did you see all of us doing what we're doing now did you see us in the careers we're in and the life choices we've made? Did you see that when we were kids? To be honest, I did not try to envision what you would be and what you would be doing. What I envisioned was finding something you were passionate about and taking it to the nth level. So, yeah. Yeah, y'all all do that. <laughs> and 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 it's, uh, it's, and it's a wild ride, and it's... Um, so how but, do you so embrace yeah, that? that? Because we all are very different, but in the <laughs> same breath, we all are very similar. So how do I, how do I embrace that? Yeah, buckle my seatbelt. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you a few months ago we went to Colorado together, and how did you embrace knowing that I we was would sad? Go? I was actually sad, if you want to know the truth, because I didn't get to go. But well, it you wasn't invited. what. You weren't invited. Exactly. And I don't need to be. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's harsh, isn't it? But that's <laughs> what I'm telling you about life changes and life changes as a mom. I had no business going on that trip. I didn't need to go on that trip. I had prepared you to go on that trip. I had prepared you years ago. But if you look at it, that. that's the first, that's not the first time Tori and I have done that, but that's the first time the three of us yeah. have done that. But Was to it? me, huh? Was it the first time all three of us have been off? Yeah, because like me and Becca have gone off a lot, but well, and see, I mean, you've gone on s- all of us. You've yeah. gone on scuba weekends, but that's not. Yeah, never, yeah I mean, I've like, never like traveled done, like, with y'all till then. Yeah. No, not like that distance. Like, I mean, we've done scuba diving and stuff like that together, but so how do I embrace it? I know it works. That's how. What works? Giving you independence and passions, and I know that that works and makes. You know, I, I said a long, long time ago, um, and and Amy um, Huber Zebart said to me at Isaac's wedding, and I think I've said this before to the listeners that she remembered me. She was our one of our babysitters when y'all were little. You would have been under four. And she remembered me saying, "I want to raise kids." that I really like as adults and that like me as an adult when we get there. And so at Isaac's wedding, she said, well, you've done it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she told me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. I really do like my kids, and I really do think 
and I'll stay in my bubble, <laughs> that they like me. And so I think that that's what does it is you, you put one foot in front of the other as a mom, doing what you think is right. Forgive yourself when you screw up because you will, and I sure have. I mean, I can sit down. There are times I do sit down and think and go, God, I wonder if they remember this. And then I think, well, I don't want to bring it up because they might not. <laughs> so, but, I mean, you've got to offer grace, and, and I offer myself grace because I give my own mom grace. And and I hope that you'll give me grace because you saw me give myself grace. So it's kind of a circle, and it, um, I mean, my mother did not do everything the way I wanted it done, but she was doing the best she could do with her resources. I haven't done everything y'all want done the way you wanted it done, but I functioned within my resources and my wheelhouse. So, and I like, I like where y'all are. I like being a mom, but we're in a transition. I mean, for the first time, I have a kid that's 1,600 miles away or thereabouts. Hours. Like yeah. I got way. I got one who's four hours away, and I got one who's a De- depending on a wandering <laughs> grappler. He's so depending on what time zone I'm in. So, but I mean, you're between an hour to wherever you happen to be traveling, even though we work together. So, there's a tremendous amount of flux in who and what what we are now. So there's transition going on, and me deciding what my boundaries are and what, what my responsibilities as a mom from this day forward, it's all of a sudden different. Why is it different? Well, because y'all are different. Well, I mean, we're different, but like, I don't think your role as our mom has changed. I mean, you're still there for us. I mean, I know I call you a lot when I'm driving home cause I work 12 hours. So I call you on the drive home so I can stay awake. Um, <laughs> Which by the way, you grew up with me talking to my mom all the time. While I'm in the car. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's, kind it's, of a, it's just see? one of those things of like, and then Becca falls asleep on me, so I can't call her. But um, <laughs> it is midnight. <laughs> midnight when she's calling but, um, me. But I mean, and I know when you came out, when I moved out here, you came with me for a, a good month. And Six I weeks. know that a lot of people kind of saw that as, oh, you're not letting her do this on her own. She needs to, you know, fly <laughs> off and be out of the coop. And, What people didn't realize was I was out of the house a long time before I moved back in with y'all and coming out here and you coming with me, you weren't here to dictate how I was going to live my life. You were here because I started work the weekend after we got out here and you were here to help me settle down and find a place and get moved. And otherwise Tori might've been back in Alabama. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that first day, she would have. The first day, I would have. Driving through uh, the city, I was almost turned around. Um, Country kid <laughs> done moved to the big city. Yeah, it yeah. was rough. So it was a rough first day. I'm not kidding. Mom can quote me in saying, I'm turning around and going home. I almost but, didn't have a ride out of that city. <laughs> you didn't let me, though. You were like, we'll figure this out. Yeah. We will figure out where you're going to live, that you're going to be happy. We will figure out. And... I think that uh, like a lot of people saw that as you were trying to dictate how I was going to do this, but it wasn't that I didn't see it as that you were here to help me and you've always been there to help all of us. And yeah, there's downfalls. Yeah. There's, you know, there's times in our lives that we'd be like, man, she kind of got on my nerves there, but, but it was never, yeah, you did, <laughs> it was, but it's, it's, it's always, we've always come back around and I, I, I know I speak for all of us when, we all enjoy coming back to the lake. We all enjoy coming back and hanging out with y'all. It, there's never a time that we're like, God, I don't want to go to the lake. Like, and not because it's the lake, but because like, we all enjoy coming home. Yeah. Well, and spending time with y'all. You know, part of my responsibility as a mom has been to sometimes help you sort through and lay out facts. Um, could you do it by yourself? Yeah. Do you have to? No. Because I'm I'm here. I'm but around. But it's in the in the world that Tori and I live in. It's we don't really have that other person to bounce that off of. Right. You're not a couple, and no. your dogs don't talk loud. <laughs> yeah. No. So oh, no, they talk pretty loud. <laughs> no whisper. But they don't. There's <laughs> not that other person to think is this a good idea. Yeah. 
And so that's where I know that some of that comes in of, I mean, when I was buying a house, nobody saw the house until I signed the dotted line and purchased it. Yeah. Y'all might have seen pictures, but no, y'all didn't come look at houses with me. Yeah. I did all of that by myself. Well, you know, the the thing about it is y'all do that for me. And I think that's, you know, I I use y'all as much as um, I use y'all as sounding boards and involved in my projects just as much as you use me. But at some point, where do you think that that line of balance is of using your kids too much as a sounding board? I think I've probably found it. <laughs> <laughs> when you stop you getting the that? answers that you were looking why for. You, why, do you, why do you say that? Um, Are you what, asking me? What? No, I'm not saying you, Becky. I'm talking to mom. <laughs> like, what? Why you do you say that? And then, like she said, like, how do you know? I, I don't know the answer to that yet. I'll let you know next year. Um, <laughs> because your lives are more and more full, and you can't you can't be my best friend. You can be my friend, and you can be part of my life, but I've got to have more than that, or I'm depending too much on you. And especially now that we're adults. Yeah. Sometimes we have other, other responsibilities sh- that fall on us that then, yeah. I shouldn't be your best friend, nor should you be my. Be- I mean, I'm not saying that when, right. Bestie. Well, when did, yeah, when did the you've line, got other besties. When did the line draw of when we were kids? Like, we weren't friends with you when we were kids. You were our mom. Like, yeah, we like you liked being around us. We liked being around you. But, like, I wouldn't be like, yeah, my mom was my best friend when I was a kid. But, like, I would. Oh, I cons- thought we were. Well. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Uh, when, when, when was it in your eyes okay to be more of a friend to us than our mom? I, or I, are you at that point? I, I honestly am not sure that you really ever get to that point. I mean, I'm still your mom. Um, now it kind of flips a little bit in that y'all are taking care of some things that I may have taken care of before and you become... A little bit, not that you parent me, but (laughs) maybe you do. Um, But, I mean, y'all have some skills and knowledge that I don't have because of the way society has kind of changed. And so I depend on you for answers. I don't really know. I I don't know that I never even thought about the fact that we were friends or not friends. I'm the mom, not the mom. I mean, But is it because you had a friend from our very early childhood that y'all were able to openly and honestly always talk. Oh, yeah. Teresa and I can sound off to each other. And since she has a daughter that is exactly like one of my daughters. That was um, exactly not me. No, nope, that was totally 100%. She knows Becca. exactly where I'm coming from, 100%. So is it so, that mom? Yeah, it's making sure you have a good, good friend. Is it you need one friend? At least, yeah. At least one friend that you can honestly, honestly say Who tells you when you're screwing with. up. And will tell you when you're screwing up and not what you want to hear. Oh, yeah. Or going, wow, that's really good. I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah. So is it having, and so that is what allows you to have yeah, that balance. I guess that was a balance, and I, and I still have that. I still have that with her. Um. Well, I think you need that kind of friend at any point in your life. Yeah, I think you do. I think you Much do. Much as a mom. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't know the answer to that. I do know the one thing that I'm seeing right now is that we're entering a new stage. And that stage is everybody is more truly independent. They're in their big, real jobs. And even though Tori's I've been in a real, big, real job, job a I Thank was you. going to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had, all of mine have been real jobs. I just haven't been there a long time. Well, and I'm I'm not saying that. I'm saying the careers are are truly rolling. And so, I mean, everybody's career is truly rolling. And so, I'm getting in Mine's deep definitely here. rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so, get a little in uh, some muddy water there, Mom. Yeah. I don't know. I and all right, that's actually the good answer. It, being a mom is muddy water. Hmm. 
it is muddy water, and sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes Are you, you sure say them sanitary. Sometimes <laughs> you say things the right way, and sometimes you don't. And so, within motherhood, I go back to what I said earlier. There's got to be grace. And so, if if I'm, but if society doesn't give you that grace, how do you find it for yourself? You just find it. First of all, society's wrong ninety percent of the time. So you just find it. But it's like I told you earlier, Becca, I went back and looked at my messages to see if I invited myself or if you invited me. Cause, <laughs> she was welcomed very warmly, apparently. Because that, that changes the tone she of how I address I was doing something, so I went on and did something else. I, I did make assumptions. She thought I was working all day, so I let her think I was working all day. So she that says to her boss, Becca. Too. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, I mean, I guess that's it, is making sure that there's open communication and that, that, um, that I don't ever step my bounds of, of and where Tori I'm And Tori told you what up. was happening. She did. I did tell she you that. Did. Well, I will say this, is that I have never been at a point in my life where I thought I could not come and talk to you. Oh, um, good. Oh, all right. Uh, there's never been something I've been like, oh, shit, I really can't talk to mom about that. You might not have done it at the moment. Well, mm, there was only one part in my life that I might have bent that a little bit. And it, I eventually came back around and said, you're right about the whole thing. So, yes. but like, I don't know if it's the same for Isaac and Becca, but I've definitely never been in a point that's like, you know, I can't tell mom about this. I've tried to navigate my way out of places that I've gotten myself into and then ended up having to. Because eventually the universe has a way of kind of forcing your hand. And so, like, that's happened to me a few times. But, no, yeah, I have I think that we built the relationship with our parents when we were young to where when you really, really, really do get to that point, you go, I, I need to call mom. But yeah. it, I think that's partially because of there was never a, well, yeah, you screwed that up or judgment. It's like when Isaac was talking about sports earlier, there was never a, well, you should have done this better in your swimming or you should have done this better. It was a, well, that was good. And waiting, do you need my opinion? And so I think that that's in some way that balance developed through our athletics, through the communication of our sports and our athletics and not putting expectations on things. It takes a village. It takes a village, y'all. And I didn't mother without other mothers around me. And Dad and I were talking about it the other day because now we're kind of talking about grandchildren and not that anybody's got any on the forefront or anything. But they got six. They're called dogs. That's right. We got They're dogs. They're called but, dog kids. But do you, know how you, do you know how you arrive at what you want to be? You look at what's around you and what's going around you, and you go ahead and talk about it before they're yours. So we talk about how other people handle their dogs and how we want this or don't want this or want that. And then we implement on, on our dogs and grand dogs. And then with grandchildren, we've been looking at how it just engulfs people's lives. And and we are talking. Are you saying we can't dump kids in your doorstep? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said yes, we're looking did. at it and we're talking That's about it. That's what she it. said. Yep. We're looking at it and we're it's talking reported. about it and deciding – you know, how we want to be. That's how you decide what kind of mom you want to be. You look at others and go, I want this. I don't want this. I had this. I want that. I don't want this. You can see the cause and effect. You can. Yeah. And if you don't take time to look at that before you're in the fire, you're screwed. So do you think that that's how you develop the relationships with us that you did? Probably. And I saw other people with relationships that I really liked. And, I mean, how did you do it with you couldn't do what you did with Tori or with me or with Isaac in the same way? Because you have two more laid-back children. The Holtz family. The Holtz family. They completely, um, Vanda Holtz completely impressed upon me raising really cool kids. But what does that mean? She let each kid be who and what they were. And, and... I was in awe. They had a fun life. They they had very different interests. The the boys, I mean, they were a full family of boys. 
but the boys had different interests and passions and and those parents let them do it and they they facilitated the learning and the exploring and the everything and they loved their mother but how do you think you did that while at the same time with me specifically you still had to break patterns that's because you were very much like her becca that's what they say. I swear, the, it's the not hardest, true. the hardest one is the one that is exactly like you. <laughs> That's what they keep saying, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I was a very scheduled. If we made the menus X Y Z, it was going to be X Y Z. You gave me my school calendar. We were going to do what it said every thirty minutes. Whereas, well, or it was not okay. Or it didn't <laughs> help. No, well, it didn't. It didn't, it didn't help. We broke that. But how did... Because you didn't have to do that with Isaac and Tori. Because God only blesses you with <laughs> one pain in the side at a time. Um, I've never liked that. What you talking just about? just call me a pain in the side, guys. Well, hey. No, honestly... I'm the angel. We all know Honestly, this. to tell you the truth, I do believe that. I, I didn't have any, <laughs> any more... Not that you were painting the side, but I didn't have any more. <laughs> Backtrack. <laughs> I didn't have any more than I could handle. And some days I couldn't handle it, and Dad helped me handle it. And I also, y'all, I had mother assistants all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you, I, I had, you had teenagers those, yeah. that came in, and one, they kept me young and kept me kind of jumping on things. And two, they helped me organize my life when I had little ones. Um, and they gave me a break. Yeah, I don't remember that as well. Well, and, and it I gave you the examples like you're talking about that you had the ones that come back to you now that they're adults and they have their own kids and they're like, oh yeah, I learned a lot of like how you. Yeah, I messed up those stackhouse kids and now mine are good. <laughs> um, and that's exactly exactly what helped me as a mom. Um, I found teenagers who had families that had very similar goals and so they came alongside me and they helped me in the kitchen or they helped me I me mean, I don't know if you go back and look at some of my files now and they are in the handwriting of Jennifer um, because Jennifer helped me organize life um, well do you think that's some of what it is is you didn't break some of who I was at the little ages by yourself mm -mm, I didn't some of it I, I pulled a little suitcase out the other day Becca to put <laughs> some more stuff in it and there's this office, and it's and it's Becca. It's completely <laughs> Becca. It's got checks that are written out. It's Probably got a cash to register. Rent bills. Yeah. Oh my God. Pay yeah. your roommate. My stuffed animals used to pay each other. Yeah. Your stuffed animals had to pay rent, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yep. She had Maybe. parking lots for her cars. You the had parking lots for your rocks. The stuffed animals would line oh. up to pay their bills and their rent, and they'd come through. There's a soup kitchen line. <laughs> These are for <laughs> I think this is because like, I wasn't allowed to play video games with Isaac. Okay. There wasn't no allowed. There wasn't no allowed. You just wouldn't play. Because I had to be the fairy she that sucked. couldn't move. Okay, first off, that was only up until a certain age. Well, well I spot. figured that out. <laughs> Yes, you, you did let stuff work itself out occasionally, Mom, because I do recall you telling Isaac he had to play video games with me. He gave me a Nintendo 64 controller and said, you're the fairy. You're Navi. <laughs> you're Navi. You're, you're helping me now, navigate the wonderful world. You loved it, Tori. Oh, I loved it. I 100% loved it. I you thought now it was play the that game. thing ever, and I now, that is one of my favorite games. See? I mean, you're welcome. But it worked out. <laughs> Not for me. It worked out. Don't Becca just controller. never got into it. But I, I will say that there are a lot of things in all of our lives that we became passionate about and that you pushed us to be passionate about it. Well, but, but and back to what I was saying is, is, is I've come back and told mom this. In my day-to-day -day job, it's so different every day, and I can have my entire time schedule laid out and, and if it the all goes to the wrong drink. person walks in the door and needs something i guess i shouldn't say the wrong, yeah, that was a really wrong person way to put if, that well it, it if but a it different can, need arises it can crumble my whole day-to-day -day plan 
And if it, uh, as a six-year-old, I didn't learn how my whole day crumbling affected six me. Six years old? I remember going through that at 16. <laughs> no. <laughs> she mastered it by but, algebra. <laughs> that would have been. <laughs> Y'all are so mean. But <laughs> if you hadn't but navigated that already with your mom. Yeah, if you I hadn't navigated it as an adult in a career job. I wouldn't have no I wouldn't know how to navigate it and it would and I've watched it throw people around me totally off. Like there are people that can't survive in the job that I work in because it's so fluctuating, because it's not fluent. Because it changes yeah. day to day. Well, and I go back to my mom navigated some things for me. She taught me how to write. And I recall laying on the floor with my feet up on the while while she was writing and I was just learning how she was writing but you know that navigating situations when they are age appropriate is never wrong cool so everybody Tori has a Isaac and Becca yeah. what is the most thing like what is the biggest thing that stands out to y'all about mom that she has done for us in our lives she taught us how to learn she taught us yeah. how to you have an interest in something well don't just sit on the sidelines and observe go jump in head first go educate yourself educate yourself find the people to ask don't be afraid to Ask the person that has the knowledge of it. The biggest thing that I've learned in jiu-jitsu is, like, the guys that are the best in the world are some of the guys that aren't afraid to look stupid when they're learning something new. And, like, you were you taught us how to never, like, worry about looking like you don't know what you're talking about, asking questions. Like, ask the quote-unquote, like, dumb question. or at, Because it's not really a dumb question. Like everybody in the room is usually thinking it. But and, nobody else is going to ask But nobody it. goes to ask it, yeah. So you taught us how to find the why and how to ask the why and ask the why until someone gives you the answer that you're looking for or that gives you that benefit of advancing to that next knowledge of it. I was going to say the same thing, that you taught us how to learn. I'll take that. What about you? What about you, Tori? Mine, mine is teaching us how to travel. I mean, okay. it, it, even though there's some trips that I don't necessarily remember, I know that you took us and we dove into places and we learned and like the, like they said you learn you, you were not afraid to go learn things and I know from our trips as adults that we have a very different way of looking at traveling and going to places and embracing different things you taught us how to embrace we those would cultures not, yeah you taught us to don't just go do the tourist culture. Like, go embrace that culture. Go learn that culture. Go eat the food. Go, you know, go do something. Don't go to the McDonald's just because it's there. Find the local and let them tell you what hole in the wall to go eat it. Yeah. Um. And to me, that's and, and I mean, not an even like going into different countries, but doing that in the states and different I mean, places like that. We were in Colorado and we said we were going to go do something and. Three of the guys at the gym go, don't do that. <laughs> bad idea. And yeah. we went, bad idea. Don't why? do that. Uh, this time of year, snow and I've, ice. I've had that happen. I've had that happen here. Of, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go do all these hikes. They're like, yeah, don't go this time, this time, or this time. And when it's summer, just don't go. <laughs> I like, told you you were gonna find oh. some indoor activities that you like out there in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know that's that's what I'm talking about. You. Find people who know more than you do. Yeah. Uh, before you I just go play. So when you're asking me why I feel comfortable and can trust, it's because you're going to find those experts and then you're going to listen to them. You're not going to go, oh, you're an idiot. I'm going to go on. I mean, you listen to them and you process it through. So um, I, I take that, y'all. That's pretty good. I, I like those things and I'm glad that um, that you feel that. I want to spin it just a little bit to the moms that are listening that none of it's impossible and none of it's too late. 
So if you weren't doing some of these things with your kids as toddlers, I, I don't think there's any, any time that's too late. There's always an activity, a conversation that can happen, even if they're adults and you don't have the perfect relationship with your kid. I think there's, there's time. Um, some of us have lost moms, and, and so there isn't that. But, um, but there are people out there that you can have the relationships with that are as strong. And so um, I encourage you to find those relationships and, and just give. The more you give, the, the more you get. That seems like a good place to yeah. wrap it up. That was, that was good advice. And grace. Don't forget grace. Give your mom some grace <laughs> in yourself. So thanks, guys. It's awesome. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Do you want to? Happy Mother's Day. Do you want to tell anybody where to find all your stuff? Stacked Keys Podcast yeah. is the podcast. And um, you can find me on Instagram and you can find on Facebook. And then just make sure you go subscribe and tell your friends. And if you have some guests, I talk to women, basically. Um, women who are making a really huge doing impact. doing incredible things in their day-to-day -day living that is just inspirational overall. There you go. They're making an impact right where they are. And um, it's a fantastic conversation. And my... Um, scheduler is Becca, and so we can line it up, and um, it's pretty awesome. Cool. Bye, everybody. See ya. Got my pockets full of dreams, and they're busting at the seams, going.